Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I was just spritzing my 100,000 subscriber award. Salutations, squaddiest famious. We have a new gang sign now. I'm pretty sure Crips or Bloods will be knocking at my door at any moment. Before we start, yes, we have hit 100,000 subscribers and I am so gassed. 100,000 has always been a big milestone for me. It's the first milestone that YouTube recognizes. Not a lot of people make it to this point, so I am just so grateful. To all of the OGs that was there since the start, to all of the new Cozy Boys who have recently joined us, you made this happen and I am eternally grateful. We don't have a silver play button yet. That thing at the start was some crafty CGI. You probably couldn't even tell the difference. But I do have a 100,000 subscriber special coming. I've got a few ideas, so I'm just gonna play around with that. So stay tuned for that little number. It's just been a mad experience, really, because I've recently changed the way that I do YouTube videos. Ever since I done the I made 500 pounds in a day thrifting or whatever the title was, I've wanted to make my videos in that kind of format. Just fun in free form. I just thought it was absolutely dead just to talk in front of a wall every single week. So thank you for those who stuck with me during the wall times. I'm in a much better place now. I love doing the videos that I do and you guys make it possible. So thank you once again. And now for our feature presentation. So as the title suggests, I'll be showing you how I make my millions. Feel free to use this as a guide. If you're in school and you're tired of that dead paper route, or if you just need a side hustle in general, thrifting and selling online can be relatively inexpensive. You don't need a lot to set up and it is a lot of fun. For me, I personally consider this my day job and I've been doing this since January, so there must be some think to it. See this as a part two to the ultimate thrifting guide or even a part two to the I made 500 pounds in a day video because yeah a lot of stuff went to 99 vintage but what about the stuff that didn't make it? What about the stuff in between those trips? They do all go on the Depop page at Roots and Rivals. Quick plug. As of right now I have three full tubs worth of clothes and I'm going to be showing you my entire process which I need to optimize a little bit on the way as well. First we're going to see how many items we actually have and then we're going to price them up a little bit just so we have an idea of what we're dealing with. After this I steam my clothes. So Ripley's believe it or not I have been using this tiny ass steamer on hundreds of clothes for well over a year now. It's beaten up, there's like lime scale all in there. I don't know if you can see that. It's dead, it takes a long time, but I do prefer this over ironing. But don't you worry, we're not gonna be using that little thing for this big job. You know why? Because I actually asked for a garment steamer for my birthday. You can actually see there that it's a standing garment steam. It's like industrial. It takes up to 2.2 liters of water. This absolute giant is going to be shouldering the task of steaming well over 50 items today. And hopefully this makes things 10 times easier. So we'll be assembling this today as well. Oh boy, aren't you excited? After we steam all the clothes and they're sitting there on the rail, that's when we do a long as photo shoot. I normally do it on the iPhone because Depop is a mobile app, so it's just easy easier to have on the phone. For those of you who are half interested, I have an iPhone 7. Yes, I have a funky new case on it as well. Hold tight, Caseify. If you want to sponsor, just hit man up in the DMs. And then after we've done all of that, it's a big, massive, boring write-up. I just pull it up on my notes on my laptop because my iPhone and the Mac are linked. So everything is primed and ready for when I drop all of these items at once. So let's get on with it and assemble a steamer. Why did I put it on my flipping head, bro? Quirky. So here is my brand new steamer. Hold tight, Netta, you G. And then, oh look. Quick Homer Simpson thing. Gee. Um, yeah, back to the top, and there it is. Nice little steamer, or should I say, heater. Ha ha ha, am I right? So yeah, I'm actually well happy with that. So here we have a big massive pile of clothes just for the Depop page. So the next move is 
to count how many actual pieces we have and then count how much it is worth. Cheese. Seventy-three items altogether, and now we get to see how much seventy-three thrift items are worth. This is low-key bargain hunt, fam. So altogether, I have estimated. Quite liberally as well, I'm not gonna lie. It might just be due to the sheer volume, but I've estimated 1,010 pounds on all of these thrifts. But that's if I sell every single one, which I'm not expecting to. But that's just a general rough idea. And just like that, it turns back into a mountain of clothes circle of life. So now we're gonna try and figure out how the steamer works, so that's gonna be fun for everyone. So after about an hour of long as steaming, we managed to do every single item. Look at that, perfectly placed. Wow, so talented, am I right guys? So the next bit of this, oh, I'm actually really small here. So the next bit of the whole process is to set this whole area up for taking photos. I use my softbox light as backdrop because you know, iPhone lighting is terrible fam. So you've got to like compensate with that. Um, this is my done basket. As soon as the item has been taken pictures of, that's not what I wanted to say. As soon as I've taken pictures of the outfit, they go into this basket so I just know they're done. And so they're in order as well, so when I do the right art, I can literally do one after the other. The saga continues. I roughly estimated all of these thrifts to be about like 700 pounds, but it turns out they're like more towards a thousand pounds. And the reason why I can eyeball these prices is due to experience. I know not everyone is gonna have that. So in lack of experience, just do price comparing. I wouldn't recommend comparing prices on Depop cause like everything's lowball. Try places like eBay or even ask on Facebook groups like Thrift Center, etc., etc. It does normally come with time. So that's just how that works. I mean, I've been doing this whole thing since 2015 and I have made a lot of mistakes, mispricings, that kind of thing. One example that I can think of off the top of my head is I found a video vintage X-Files t-shirt, if you know about that show done though. And right at this very second, that exact t-shirt is worth 55 to 60 pounds and I sold it for like 10 to 12 pounds. And that is simply because I didn't do any research, I didn't price check it or anything like that. So if you wanna avoid making lots of those mistakes, then do a little bit of price comparison. And if you're not sure about something, think about holding it back. So now we've got to take like 50 million pictures, so. spent an entire afternoon on this. I started this whole process at 12. It is now half five in the afternoon. And this is generally typical, give or take a few hours. It's all down to the sheer volume of clothes that you have. So normally after I've got three quarters of the material that I need to put this on Depop, the only thing left to do is write up. Write up is basically just a little description of each item. I take a little break for the day, knowing that everything is ready to be dropped whenever I want. Typically it's a Friday, everything just goes on the Depop page. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say that, ah, oh, Depop is like the best platform to sell your vintage clothes. The only real reason I still use it 
is because people know where to find me on there. I've got a little bit of a, of a following on there, I suppose you could call it. It's super casual because I'm not that consistent, but trust me when I say Depop haven't done me any favors. I haven't been featured on the Explore page in literal years. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying I'm just here in it. In terms of platforms, I would definitely suggest eBay or the ASOS Marketplace, depending on how serious you wanna get with this but the lower the platform fees, the better. Most of these sites would take a certain percentage of every sale you make. So places like Instagram or using your own website is even better. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with information. This isn't a lecture. So if you've got any questions on selling or vintage clothes in general, then leave them in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was more of a day in the life kind of thing, not when I'm out and about doing exciting things at the rails, at the charity shops. The other side of all of that is definitely here. It is a little bit boring, but this is real life. That was a bit serious. But to come back to the title of the video, how much do I make thrifting? In theory, this particular haul should be 1,000 pounds, but that's entirely down to the customers. Are you necessarily gonna make that all in one day? Etc. Etc. et cetera. But there it is, full circle. Don't know what that was about. If you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, then please consider pressing that subscribe button and pressing that little bell icon as well if you want to get notified when I upload a new video. If you like this video, give it a like. If you dislike this video, give it a dislike. Thank you for watching my video. Bye.